that? Hi, welcome to the special pet rescue edition of Localish. I'm Jill Rappaport. We're calling this Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm a journalist, a podcast host, an author, but the role that means the most to me is animal advocate. You know, I'm truly all about rescue and adoption. It's my oxygen. And the underdogs of the shelter world is where my heart lies. The special needs, the pits, and the seniors, because those are the animals languishing in shelters nationwide. And today, this show is so wonderful because we're shining a light on so many incredible animals and the people making a difference in their lives. I'm sure you notice my my little scene stealer here, or big scene stealer. This is Stanley, and he is one of my many rescues. He's a super senior, and if I do say so myself, the perfect dog. So well behaved. Look at, we're in Central Park. Nothing is phasing you, right, Stanley? Although the man coming up that we're about to meet, Bill Berloni, will really tell us how perfect Stanley is, since he is animal trainer extraordinaire. Bill, fancy meeting you and your famous friends here in Central Park. How are you? We're great, we're great. And I should mention that this man is trainer extraordinaire to all animals. And what's so incredible about him is that you not only find these animals, save their lives, give them a second chance at a life, you turn them into superstars. Literally, here's two of them. Richard Burton, who's in the new and just like that, Sex in the City, of course, you know that show. And this is Addison, who is on the road, and she is the Annie dog, Sandy. Correct, yep. So great to see you. It's amazing what you do for these animals. Thank you, thank you. And it's so great to be out here in Central Park. I love New York, they love New York. You have done this for years. You find these animals in the most, some, in the most dire situations. You literally save their lives, but then they go on to become stars. Yep, I started my career as an animal trainer when I was 19 years old, and I was doing a show, and I rescued that dog, and that show and that dog changed my life forever, and I made a promise. I'd always use rescue dogs. So, you know, it's, it's just been so great because we can promote animal welfare by put, making these dogs stars. And that's what people are just so blown away by. Because when they see these animals on the screen, on the stage, and they're performing so perfectly, it's just such a great message for rescue and adoption. As you and I know, people think dogs and shelters are damaged in some way, but they're not. They're just homeless. So for me to walk in, I mean, anybody could have adopted these two dogs before I did and had, would have had great pets. But these are just talented dogs that now are entertaining people and, and, and making uh, people laugh. And let's talk about Addison. Mm -hmm. This little angel goes around the country, starring on stage in Annie as Sandy, yeah. and has been doing it for a long time and goes from city to city mm -hmm. and not a bark out of her. Nope. <laughs> no, that show I, I was talking about was the original production of Annie in 1977. I found and trained the original Sandy. And so Addison was rescued from a no-kill shelter down in North Carolina now is starring in Annie across the country, keeping up that tradition of wonderful rescue dogs. And with Richard Burton, everybody loves English Bulldogs. Mm. And I would imagine from this show that is getting so much buzz and attention, what has this done for Richard? Actually, he started his career on Broadway. We get these dogs for the production of Legally Blonde, the musical, mm -hmm. and he plays the, the dog Rufus. So from going, he's going from stage to screen, so he's really upped his resume on this one. And for you as a trainer, you know, it's one thing to take any dog and teach it to sit, behave, be quiet, but you're teaching these animals something that very few animals will ever experience in their lifetime. To be in front of an audience, mm -hmm. to have to perform, to know cues. Where does it begin? How do you do this, Bill? Actually, it's pretty simple. You know, an animal shelter is a pretty stressful place, and so if an animal is dealing well with the stress there, I know I could put them in a limo and take them to a, a set and they're <laughs> going to be fine. Limo? <laughs> yes. But um, the other part of it too is not only do they live on our farm in Connecticut uh, for the rest of their lives, but they get to be loved by so many people and, and um, get to do things and have a job. And you know, that's really what our dogs want to do, be with us all the time. And because they're becoming so famous, do they now give autographs? Um, only our request. <laughs> What do you say, Richard Burton? Mm -hmm. Can I get a little autograph? Mm -hmm. Well, Bill Berloni, it's always so great to see you. And we will be catching up with you later in the show with a very special guest whose life your dog truly affected. But from dog trainer extraordinaire to dog walker with quite a flair, 
He literally takes pack of animals, he calls himself the pack walker, and he makes them zen while they're on their walks. Now that's not an easy task when you consider that he's in the city that never sleeps. I'm not necessarily the most talkative person. I'm a little bit more introverted, which is why dogs are a good fit for me. We can just go out, I can just roll out and talk, walk with my dogs and we don't have to really talk much or try to be anything other than what I am. I'm Ryan Stewart. I'm a professional dog walker in New York City. I am putting on my shoes and we're gonna grab one of my dogs and we're gonna take off and go get, do a walk. I came to New York City to be a professional dancer, and then I ended up getting cancer right before entering college, Juilliard. So I ended up going to Memorial Sloan Kettering for a year and a half instead. And that sort of changed the way I thought about dance. I wasn't so all in. I still loved it and I still did it, and I still did some professional gigs, but I didn't become that full-time dancer. And then so my friends told me, you should work with dogs. You're pretty good with them. And I thought that was a good idea. And so I started working with dogs and it slowly became, you know, it started off slow at first, but then it be within, let's say three years, it became my full-time job. I'm gonna get a small dog, so a small leash. And I'm gonna get a medium dog. And then I take an extra, one extra leash just in case. I'm not necessarily the most talkative person. I'm a little bit more introverted, which is why dogs are a good fit for me. We can just go out, I can just roll out and talk, walk with my dogs and we don't have to really talk much or try to be anything other than what I am. All right, thanks, thanks. I did come from kind of a difficult background. One neighborhood I grew up for in for years was like kind of like a very street tough background so that help that helps me that background helps me when I take dogs into juvenile detention because then I'm working with kids who are kind of tough I relate to them the ones who come who I work with with the dogs are always happy to see me and the dogs you know they just they get so much out of it and that's one of the, the benefits about dogs is let's say you're trapped inside and you have no access to nature like trees or the ground or the sky because you're not free but a dog represents nature and then you can put your hand on the dog and it's like touching a tree or standing with your feet on on grass so those kids get to touch the dogs and you can actually you can see the effect that it has upon them this is one of my best dogs for therapy dog work a lot of kids really like this one because he'll just sit on your lap and just you just like pet, 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 pet him. Dog walking has a wide range of pay. Someone like me, who's more experienced and can handle groups, can make well over a hundred thousand a year. Most dog walkers make a little bit less than that. It can be a very lucrative job if you're good at it and you like dogs. And I would say it's lucrative in the way that like. Maybe you, sometimes you, you might not be making as much money as if you were a banker, but if you love dogs, it can be like, it can be a real thing of beauty. If I want someone to learn from me or my company, it would sort of be in what the title of the company is. I chose it. I said, okay, well, who, what type of person am I? I'm like, I actually love dogs and I want the best for the dog, so, huh. Ryan for dogs. In my mind, it means that I'm gonna try to take care of the dog despite what the owner wants. I mean, not I'm not gonna go against them, but I'm, what it means, like Ryan, for, Ryan is for the dogs, Ryan for dogs. So I'm not here to please the owner, I'm here to help do the best I can for the dog. Hi. When we come back. Good to see you, thank you so much for being part of this. Stranger Things star, Gabby Pizzolo stops by. Who is that? Who is that? And later, we'll meet this little foster pup who was born without front legs. But try telling him that. Hi, Gabby! Good to see you. Thank you so much for being part of this. Thank you for having me. And we have a really big surprise for you. Oh my God! Oh my Who is that? Who is that? It's your girl. Yes, it is. Hi. Do you believe you found her? Oh my gosh! How are you? Oh, 
kiss him. Oh, I missed you. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. Well, it is certainly so great to have the one and only Gabby Pizzolo joining us. You were a star since you were 10 years old on Broadway and Matilda. Of course, we all know you now from Stranger Things, the Netflix sci-fi hit. And this dog literally I... left such a mark on your career, you actually credit Bodie with changing your career. Yes, yes, that is absolutely true. I did Because of Win dixie in Alabama with Bodie. And it was probably still to this day, one of the things that I have said on multiple occasions was one of the best jobs of my life. And Bill, you knew the chemistry was there immediately. She was a little girl. And this is a big dog. <laughs> and just the idea of pairing them together. And it was her first rescue dog experience. Well, it was her first dog experience, period. When we were doing the final callbacks, we had some of the best actresses on Broadway. And this one was so natural with him, but she never had a dog. And I was a little worried about how that would work, but they bonded, uh, they learned to work together, and he shined because of you. Absolutely. And I, I know when you were with Bodhi, did you sing to him? Oh, all the time, even, even when I was not on stage. We used to stay together to just help the relationship, and uh, yeah. Well, not to put you on the spot, but since you're here, and you oh. have a fabulous voice, and Bodhi's here, how about a little song to a make him remember song. those times? Ah, <laughs> oh, I feel like it's gotta be something from Win Dixie if we want him to remember. I'm sure he does. Uh, uh, what I got may not look like much, but what I've got is mine. I'm not a rolling in the blessings, but I'm doing fine. People wonder why I'm smiling. I always can make do with what I got when what I got is you. Yay! On that note, it doesn't get any better. Gabby, thank you so thank much, you. Bill. A match made in heaven. A match made in heaven. Truly, truly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is one of the best days of my life. <laughs> Ours too. <laughs> Now in today's digital world, animals definitely rule. I like to call them inferencers. And we're about to meet one very popular hot dog who's definitely living the life of Riley and racking up a ton of followers. So on Pretzel's Instagram, we do a lot of pictures of our lives in New York, but we also try to capture all the little adventure we go on with Pretzel. Our intention with her Instagram is to not only show what she's up to and show cute pictures of her, but also like share the joy that she brings. My name is Poppy. And I'm Pascal. And this is our dog Pretzel. Bro, bro, kid, yeah. What we love about dogs is that they're always there for you. When you come home, they're always happy. It's like you can leave for two minutes and you come back and they're so excited to see you, like they haven't seen you for days or weeks. And they always have like, especially Pretzel, she has such a good personality where she's she's always happy and she always gets excited. And no matter what happens, she, she comes to you, she wants to cuddle you, she wants to be close to you. So we both live in New York City. We live in a little apartment. So we always wanted a small dog. And Pretzel is so little and she fits in my bag. And I, we take her everywhere. We take her to restaurants. We take her to bars. We take her to shopping malls. Basically everywhere that we go, she's always with us. So it's funny because I was the one who wanted a dog. Pascal was like, oh, I don't really care. I don't know if like she can fit in into our lifestyle. So he wasn't sure about it. But once we got the dog, you immediately fell in love. You developed such a close bond with Pretzel. Like every night we go to bed, they like hold each other's hand. They have this such a close little bond and it's just so cute to see. You guys like so in love with each other. It's so cute. Yeah, Pretzel is my little girl. We started an Instagram account the day we got her. And when we take Pretzel out for a walk around our neighborhood, sometimes she gets recognize and people would come say hi to her. So on Pretzel's Instagram, we do a lot of pictures of our lives in New York, but we also try to capture all the little adventure we go on with Pretzel. 
Our intention with her Instagram is to not only show what she's up to and show cute pictures of her, but also like share the joy that she brings and see that what a dog can bring to someone. Small dog, but a big personality. When we come back, we're off to the city by the bay with a one-of-a-kind restaurant fit for a canine. And later, we'll meet a mighty man who's using his muscle to save pint size for angels. Never seen a dog like a Chihuahua that has so much love to give in return in such a little packet. Now we're going to go from Central Park to the West Coast, the Mission District in San Francisco, to check out a very hip, trendy restaurant that caters to my kind of clientele. Four-legged and fabulous. So here's the mosaic chicken. Our whole motivator is changing the way uh, people see what food is for dogs, for cats, for all animals. I think it all started uh, from a very deep-rooted, selfish desire, quite frankly, to feed my dog uh, the absolute best food possible. Um, and it really kind of, from that desire, uh, gave birth to so much more. Everything that we, we see, everything that we're, we're doing around us, um, that, that was kind of the driver for it. Real food, healthy food. We offer everything from, you know, single ingredients, dehydrated treats, uh, to full balanced meals, to toppers, to mixers, to all the way up to the, the fine dining. Our Bon Appetit Cafe is, is, draws on my experience in the culinary world, right? It started as something that my wife and I did for our own dogs on their birthdays as a special treat that we would uh, offer them more for us, right? Let's be honest, the ingredients, the quality, the sourcing is for them, the plating and presentation is for me. The dogs don't care whether it's floral or whether it has an abstract design, they could care less. They don't really mind that. But it was something that was a very special, unique offering that we did for our own dogs. So kind of as a opportunity, we said, let's offer this to other guests, see if they're also interested in giving their dogs treats on their special day or their birthday or whatever it is. The biggest thing for me is just the creativity and skill that the dogs get to enjoy, that as a human, I would love to enjoy as well. So to get to share it with your dogs, I think is special. To be able to come out and see everyone happy and smiling and taking pictures and, and, and the joy that it brings them, um, only animals can do that. You're gonna love this story. Talk about from massive to mini. We're about to meet a bodybuilder who's devoted his whole life to opening up a sanctuary to save little chihuahuas. My name is Bobby Humphreys. I am the owner of uh, Big Guy Little's World Sanctuary, and we are a sanctuary for neglected, abused, and abandoned chihuahuas. I know what it's like to have society cast you aside, beat you up, spit you up, you know, chew you up and spit you out, and that's what's happened to them, and I'm giving them my word that they will never have to experience that again. Everything leading up to a certain point in my life was just like on a, on a roll. There wasn't anything that I put my mind to that I couldn't do, accomplish, or succeed at. And it just seems like everything in this world fell apart for me. When all this went down, I was just, I was so at a loss and it was such a low point. There was nothing for me left to believe in. And um, I tried checking out, I just gave up. You know, I'm still reeling from this and my friend Connie, she needs a favor. She needed a place for her dog Lady to stay temporarily. And you know, here's the description of lady she literally hates everybody and she's unpredictable within 15 minutes was in my lap and connie came over to check on her like a couple hours later and we've been inseparable ever since Good morning babies so i would just say find that one thing find that one thing that makes you realize that you're special that you're that you're worth something and for me it was these little guys here when we come back we'll meet a tiny foster pup with the heart and will of a giant Now coming up, we're about to meet an amazing foster dog, born without front legs, but still living his best life, thanks to a homemade wheelchair and lots of love and support. Come on, buddy. There he goes. Hi, my name's Steve Jewell, and this is my buddy, Rue. I'm 28 years old, and he's six months. Good boy. Oh, crash him. We both uh, rolled around a little bit. Come on, bub. It's Superman. Before, when he was down south, they were saying that somebody was gonna put him in a bag and throw him in a river. And I'm glad that didn't happen because 
Now we got the little guy. That's a good boy. 2009, I got in a car accident. Somebody ran through a red light, running from the cops, and I was paralyzed, airlifted. Yeah, it's been life on wheels since then. You know, make the best of it, keep going, no big deal. Good boy. We have fashioned a little wheelchair for him. I'm a plumber, so I use materials I'm comfortable with. I've used PVC and skateboard wheels, which we had sitting around. Once he gets full grown, then we can get him a, a permanent one. This is just a temporary set of wheels for him. It's just crazy that we are able to give him such a good life and it could have been over just because he was different. I feel like he has a pretty good attitude about himself. He's having a blast throwing himself all around, just being a regular dog. He doesn't see himself any different. Just like me with having a whole bunch of loving people around you, you know, makes things a little easier. There you go, he's a good boy. He helps me also see everything's good. You know, it just shows you love that you didn't get all day or you know, you just need something to make you smile and there's always a good little dog for that. One wheel, two wheel. There you go. I always just look forward to looking at the best part of the situation. I don't really dwell on things too much. That's the thing, life, you know, you never, ever know what's gonna happen. Get in there, get in there. Come on, come on, bub. Now that story really resonated with me because it was my three-legged German Shepherd Jack that changed my life and career forever. He never let the loss of a limb stand in the way of living the best life. And because of that, he taught me so much about life. You know, animals are incredible teachers. They're our best friends, and they're just the best company in the world. And they need our help now more than ever. So please, if you can, open up your heart and home to a rescue animal. I promise you, it will be the best gift you not only give to them, but also to yourself. Thank you so much for joining us on this very special edition, Animal Rescue Edition of Localish. Say goodbye, Stanley. He's just immersed in Central Park.